to live, work, and play. Hey, we have a great show today. We're going to be spending time with Mayor Billy Hughes. But before we go to him, I just want to share something with you. I was doing some early morning reading, and I ran across a quote from Pat Tillman. You may remember him. He was the NFL a uh, football player who decided to join the military, went to Afghanistan, and unfortunately was killed. But it was man, he was killed back in 2004. It's, a, it's amazing how much time has flown by. But to study Pat Tillman's life is to, is to really understand someone who was working really hard to, to be a better person, to contribute back to his country. The fact that he left the NFL to join the military, there's so much inspiration in that. But one of the things he said along the way is that passion is what makes life interesting. Passion is what makes life interesting. And you could tell he literally gave his life to pursue his passion for our country. And again, it's hard to believe it's been 2004 since, since all that happened. But, you know, I had the opportunity here on, on Coast View to talk to people literally every day, who have a passion for coastal Mississippi. And uh, we're lucky that we have so many incredible leaders who are really dedicating their passion to coastal Mississippi in a way that's helping us build a better set of communities here. And one of those is my friend Billy Hughes, who's going to be joining me for the full show today. And without any further ado, let me uh, let me go to Billy and just say good morning. How you doing, my friend? I'm doing fine, doing fine. Just another day in paradise. Yeah, it, it is another day in paradise. Listen, uh, you passed me some new music along the way. For people who know this, Billy is uh, quite a musician, a songwriter. He sings, plays drums, plays guitar, you know, just kind of a, a jack of all trades in the music world. Um, you, you you enjoy that, don't you, my friend? Uh, it's therapy for me. Uh, but I've been uh, with a group of guys who are remarkably musicians and just good friends on top of that. And so... We get together about once a week and um, see what comes up, uh, whether it's a cover or an original. So it's uh, it's fun to put it out there. Yeah, I know it is. I know you have a lot of fun doing that. It's fun, fun following you in that regard. Hey, we'll talk about uh, spring break here in just a minute before we get too far into this conversation. But when you're uh, you know visiting with people, how do you explain how things are going these days in Gulfport? Well, I tell them Gulfport's doing great despite the mayor, um, uh, and uh, but that kind of sums up how we take things. We, you know, it's a serious business we're in, but we try to have a good time, open for business, geared for a good time. Um, but there's, there's just so much to do along this coast, and Gulfport is no exception. Uh, you know, we're coming up on our 125th anniversary in late July as a city, and so we're going to have a little celebration there, and uh, we're really kind of taking a look back as far as where we've been, and you always look at what your prospects are, too. But um, we, we're, we're pretty resilient as a people, and I think, you know, we like who we are. We enjoy folks, and uh, you can't live in a better place, as you know, and you talk about this all the time. So whether it's our restaurants, whether it's our attraction or just our natural resources, there's a lot to appreciate about, uh, about Gulfport. It is, man. A lot of good stuff happening in that city as we speak. I, I mentioned to Jace Payne when I had him on recently. Incidentally, he's doing a terrific job leading the Young uh, Professionals Organization. And we had an awesome visit recently about a column that he wrote and will continue to write. The, the Coast Young Professionals have partnered with Super Talk Mississippi Media and will be writing a, a, a column about not just young leaders that are emerging to lead organizations across Mississippi, but this whole notion of how do we fight you know, brain drain in this state? How do we attract young people to come here? But I mentioned in the conversation with him, man, driving into Gulfport now and seeing that that walkway under construction between the Mississippi Aquarium and uh, and Jones Park, it's great to see that coming to fruition, isn't it? Well, it speaks to uh, the collaborative nature of what we try to do as a community. You know, that is a project that we had talked about to kind of round out the, the aquarium campus and make a tie-in. Uh, yeah, and, and there's a lot of needs for it, uh, not just sending a message and doing something. There's not a crosswalk like that in America, so it's, it's got some uh, really neat elegance to it and, and multiple use. But uh, in, in tying that together, we talk about the number of people who come and cross 90 on foot every year it's about 150,000 people and in from from you know end of November to the first of January during harbor lights we have over a hundred thousand people use that area so we're fortunate we haven't had an accident or a problem so there's a safety component there's there's a, um, a beautification uh, just a, uh, an amenity component too so I think it brings more vigor and vibrance and interest down to our harbor uh, our marina district and our downtown 
So, um, yeah, it gets people talking. Hey, look, something's going on. It's, it's kind of exciting, and um, it's going to give a whole new look for people going across, getting that vista, looking south across the harbor and beyond into the sound. It is really cool. I love the design of it, incidentally. Instead of just coming straight across the way it sort of does this S shape coming down, that's pretty cool, isn't it? Well, we wanted to, you know, we didn't want to do your typical straight across the highway. And since it was going into this remarkable green space of Jones Park, not everybody's going to, some people are going to go to the west, some people want to go to the south or the east. So it accommodates, uh, you know, a, a thought pattern where people who can, pedestrians, they can go both ways. If you have a golf cart or, or any type of um, tram that we intend to have to move people back and forth, heck, we may bring the Harbor Tour trains back, Ricky. Uh, <laughs> but uh, it, it gives an opportunity for us to let folks use vehicular access. Their bicycles is just more user friendly for this uh, beachfront that, that uh, sometimes we take for granted. No, there's no doubt. You said the green space. I can remember... Back in the day before Katrina, there was always this public debate going on around Jones Park and what can be done there, what can't be done there, et cetera. But it seemed like Katrina sort of cleared the deck on that, and we now have a good vision about what Jones Park is all about. You think about the Barksdale Pavilion, how it all ties together with the harbor. Uh, when you say green space, man, the, the landscape architecture there is just incredible. It just is all coming together, isn't it? Well, the design after Katrina that uh, Mayor War and Mayor Slogel saw through and getting it rebuilt was uh, pretty remarkable and gave us a real good uh, template to, to draw from and build from. And since then, we have uh, gotten uh, acquired most of the property for the city of Gulfport through the Secretary of State and, and dedicating that whole area as a park. So it's about public access. It's about public enjoyment. Uh, and I think we've done more. The legislature has given us some uh, funding to do in concert with Harrison County. Um, on the uh, east side of 20th Avenue, which is that entrance into it near Barksdale, to do a parking surface there as well. So with all the events that we continue to have and build out, uh, it just continues to make it more availability to the public. Um, you know, the federal government, we've had to wait a bit, uh, as we always do after storms for pier repair, but I can uh, glad to report that Moses Pier repairs uh, for public access are well underway there. So we should have that open in time for the season, which is great. Um, the other piers, we're just getting the green light, so it's going to take some time, but that's underway as well. But it's frustrating for all of us, but uh, we keep on pushing forward. Yeah, I wish it didn't take so long to uh, to get our piers rebuilt. I, I, I could see Kyle uh, the producer of the Coast View, he and his son love to fish. They like Moses Pier. I noticed him kind of shaking his head, Jess, because, I mean, there's a lot of people who go and park there. And the fishing at Moses Pier, as you well know, Billy, it's really good. I mean, you can catch such a wide variety of fish. So that will be a welcome uh, renovation there for sure. Yeah. yeah, you know, you mentioned Coach Young Professionals, and when you and I were coming up, that was the JCs, right? Yeah. And it was, you know, the Young Professionals coming together, Junior Chamber of Commerce, and they're filling that void uh, which which is pretty remarkable. And, you know, the brain drain discussion is important, but I, I spoke to a group of um, senior uh, student council at Gulfport High last week and just talking about this. And I share the concern, but I'm not as concerned because we talk about making ambassadors every day. And if we raise our kids right and, and have them go off, they're really envoys for this Gulf Coast. For And this is a special place. Most of them I'm hoping and encouraging them to gravitate back. So, like, if you got to go, go, see as much as you can and bring back some fresh ideas, some ideas, things you'd like to see that can make our community even better. So, um, you know, and, and uh, you know, we see it with our kids. Some go and they stay for a while. Some go and they come back. But a lot of them make their way back, which is really a great thing. And they do have an idea of what they'd like to see and experience because the reasons they came back are for opportunity, place to raise their family that is first and foremost for a lot of these to be able to you know enjoy what they did growing up with our natural resources that a lot of communities do not have and so um it really is about uh educating folks about what this community is all about well, you know billy when i became publisher of the sun herald in 2001 we pushed at the sun herald a, a, a strategic plan that we called the south mississippi strategy we, we, we always believe, and as you and I have had, we've had shows where we've talked about this, we've always had this conversation that the coast is better together than if we were to work against each other. And Roland used to say pretty regularly that one of the, one of the major challenges we had is that we didn't really have to, we didn't really have to worry too much about whether 
Jackson was going to take care of us because we were so busy fighting amongst ourselves that we kind of nullified yeah, our voices. Yeah. And the, the reality is that, you know, and then as this mayor, you pushed a, a sort of a one coast approach. You think about whether it be through coach, you know, chamber and the chambers, the way they work together, the business council, the way they work, the way that what mayors are working together, the, the I mean, what you guys are doing together is incredible. Think about, you mentioned it as it relates to coach young professionals. You know, again, it's, they're all, this is, this, these are young people that are next up. These aren't people just now stepping into leadership roles. They're already leading in very significant ways in coastal Mississippi. And they're from a cross coastal Mississippi and they're coming together and they're realizing that the, our differences are important, but boy, when we can work together on the issues of common concern, we can make some major, major progress. Hey, when we come back on the other side, we'll continue this part of the conversation as it relates to one coast with Mayor Billy Hughes. We'll see you after this. Welcome back to Coast View. I have my friend, the mayor of the city of Gulfport, Mayor Billy Hughes, with us. And when we went to break, we were just talking about this whole notion of one coast and how it's really served us. You know, Billy, one of the interesting things is I've had the opportunity to be involved in leadership, Gulf Coast, I know you have as well, the master's program for the Gulf Coast Business Council, any any number of other leadership programs that are taking place across the coast of Mississippi. And every single one of them have now as part of their, their teaching that we are, we're, we're certainly a, a, a wonderfully diverse set of communities here in coastal Mississippi. But when we can come together on major issues to push forward this notion of this being sort of an economic engine for the rest of the state, uh, we're better off when we do that. And everyone's learning about that. Everyone's, that's becoming part of their conversation, this whole notion of, of one coast. I, and that, that's hugely important, is, <clears throat> excuse me, isn't it? Yeah, you know, you mentioned you mentioned role, and I'm thinking back, uh, um, uh, Judge, former Mayor Geis, uh, Danny Geis, uh, you know, when they were really key to a lot of the recovery after after Camille, and so uh, we were kind of you and I and others uh, of our generation were in that same role, you know, when Katrina uh, nailed us, and so when one thing I noticed from from the legislature said, you know, they quite frankly take advantage of the fact that we would divide uh, among community lines, and um, you know, so I thought, let's talk, let's start a different conversation. And it's like, we call it cultural gumbo, right? Yeah, you know, every ingredient makes it a little better. And so what's cool about this coast is every community has its own personality. So we need to celebrate that differences as opposed to divide over it because the rest of the world, the rest of Mississippi, they see us as the coast. They don't see us as individual cities until they get to know us. And then when they come here, they had that, we call that, I, I had no idea moment, how great it was on a lot of levels. And so I think we've matured in our discussion as far as seeing that, okay, it's okay to have differences. It's a cooperation. We're going to compete. We're going to get what we can. But when somebody gets something next door, it's going to benefit us here and vice versa. And so um, that doesn't mean we don't, we, we don't scratch and scrape for our own community and try to enhance what we have here. That's our responsibility. But there are a lot more benefits to have a collaborative approach to governance, to business, uh, to community affairs. And one of those, uh, you know, we've got a crawfish festival, a crawfish competition coming up that um, Mayor Holloway in Ocean Springs is hosting on Saturday. So uh, I've told Rafferty and the other crew, they just need to stay at home. We're going to go ahead and bring in and win it just like we did the gumbo competition. But they said there was some home cooking there since Gulfport hosted it. But it speaks to the friendly level of competition and, and cooperation that we're enjoying as mayors across this coast. And uh, hopefully that's contagious. So we're having a little fun um, uh, at, 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 you know, some very, very serious work. Well, I know that during the pandemic, you as we've talked about many times, you guys stayed in touch with each other, learning from what each other's experiences were going to be. You continue to meet regularly. And as I said to you before, we've got this great group of uh, mayors all across the coast of Mississippi. None, all of them who had f found success in their real lives decided to come back and be a mayor because they wanted to get back to the community. But when you have people who have the 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 goal, which is to improve coastal Mississippi as the as the main goal, it makes it a lot easier to develop relationships with them, isn't it? It does. It, it does. And, you know, sometimes we, we can get myopic because we have so much on our plates um, uh, within our own jurisdiction. So it's helpful. So COVID, you know, did a reset for a lot of things. Before that, we really um, did a good job meeting about every quarter as coastal mayors um, to talk about just kind of, hey, what's happening in your community? 
um, what do y'all want to work on? What are you seeing? What are trends? Uh, so the, the, that sharing of information, and usually we'd have somebody come in, uh, you know, whether it was a, a, a statewide elected official to kind of give us a different perspective and allow, allow us some face time with them as well. So it turned out to be a, you know, casual, but very effective um, round table. And so, you know, got to think and say, we hadn't done that in a while since COVID. So we got together a couple of weeks ago and started talking about things. And I can tell you that every mayor I talk to across the country, the aspect of homelessness is, is an issue. Um, the aspect of panhandling is an issue. And uh, there are two distinct things. And uh, the, the former is, is, a, is a big chunk. And it's gonna take a change in federal policy. It's gonna change, take a change in state policy and funding. We went to a dis decentralized mental health component, which is a big part of all this, but you've got mental health issues, you've got drug use, um, you've got uh, just a lot of things that, that we have to deal with, with the aspect of homelessness, which is a much larger and longer perpetual conversation. Panhandling is a different animal. And uh, we thought, you know what, we're gonna try to address that directly because uh, Fofo and I in particular hear from people on a regular basis, I can't get, I can't gas up uh, without being approached by one, two, three, or four people. I can't go to a restaurant without being harassed. And some of these folks who pay handle are very, very persistent, if not, um, uh, you know, in your face sometimes. And so it's, uh, it's disconcerting as a bit of a safety concern, and it's an impact on our economy and, quite frankly, the reputation of our community. Uh, many of these folks uh, are not on the up and up. They make a living off of um, the, uh, the charity of others. And uh, so you've got that component, and then you've got folks who feel compelled to give because of their Judeo-Christian values. All right. So we've been talking for almost a year now how to address this. In the last few months, working with the Gulf Coast Community Foundation, have come up with a way to not only, number one, do what other communities have done, put up signs that it's okay to say no to panhandling. But, yes, it's okay to say no, but I want to give to these folks because they may be in, in need. Well, with the Community Foundation, we've established a fund called A Better Way to Give, and uh, what it does, it's uh, we'll put up signs that say, do we do discourage panhandling? But if you really wanna give, text to this number and it'll show you how you can give your money and it's gonna help those who are truly in crisis that our police and fire our first responders come across on a regular basis who found themselves immediately destitute on the cusp of homelessness and needing a tank of gas, uh, a bus ticket, uh, an overnight stay, so they can get in touch with the nonprofits who provide permanent housing, who provide you know access to jobs, maybe some counseling. And so the nonprofit uh, groups across the coast are partnering with us as well. We will have a launch of this uh, starting this week and talk more in depth over uh, the next month and uh, when it really uh, kind of goes live, so to speak, on June 1st. So that's something to look to, but we're trying to address this in a very direct, uh, manner that addresses safety, but also do it uh, with the, with the proper spirit. Yeah, when I was in New Orleans, uh, in fact, we did some we did some research on this and uh, and some stories in, in, uh, around it as well. And what we discovered is that some of the panhandlers were making a pretty good living doing what they did. They they were literally professional panhandlers. They they weren't homeless at all. They they were making a good living, standing out, uh, uh, you know, claiming to be homeless, et cetera. And uh, that's a trend in America, isn't it? Uh, you know, too many folks have uh, out there uh, understand the charitable nature of our people, and um, and they will take advantage of that. And so you see that. But um, you know, Judy Young is doing a remarkable job with um, Coastal Mississippi. And uh, I asked her, I said, I love it when people come in with a new fresh set of eyes and Judy's looking at you to use to communities with a tourism kind of uh, viewpoint. And I said, what are we doing right? And what do we need to work on? She said, what you're doing right is hospitality. It is, it is something that is in y'all's DNA. Y'all like people and it comes across that way. It's really refreshing and remarkable to see. And it's, it's um, pretty broad, spread, widespread. It's, it's so widespread that you, you can't be orchestrated. It's just part of who you are. So the hospitality state is real. I said, okay, I'm afraid to ask, but what's the next? She said, your indigent population. He said, she said, um, uh, up and down um, uh, 49 and Highway 90 across the coast in particular are very, very uh, troublesome areas and uh, really need to work on that. So that spurred us to move forward. And she gave an example of going to a gas station and um, she was mobbed and, and she was made to feel very, very uncomfortable because they were aggressive. 
uh, and and sometimes they're verbally abusive too. And she I said, probably would never go back there. She said, not in a million years. Mm-hmm. And so if she is having this type of experience, for all the other wonderful things going on, this is a real concern for us. And so um, uh, we know others are experiencing this too. We're meeting with the nonprofits, as I mentioned, but also merchants in the areas where panhandling is problematic. So if they want to put these same signs uh, in their places of business to discourage the uh, the practice of panhandling, we encourage that. And so we'll be meeting with them as well. So really it is a all hands on deck, holistic approach to this problem. It's good to see you and Fofo of like mind on this. Again, just one more example of how when you have these one coast conversations between mayors, um, you know, pr- really important things can come as as a result of. It. Actually, what we'll do is plan a me- meeting or show with you and Fofo in early May, and uh, talk about the rollout of this pro- project. Share the signs and whatever else you guys want to share about this. It's good to see that. It really is. Yeah. Hey, listen. As it relates to one, uh, Kyle, we're getting close to the end of the segment here. Okay. So we're. Well, why don't we do this? Because I don't want to get started on the conversation around uh, spring break. And what was literally a one coast response to the challenges that that Biloxi had as a result of that, the mayor and I spent uh, an entire show together last week and talked about it from beginning to end. And uh, they've been in touch with Florida and other other communities to try to understand what can be put in place to begin to kind of <laughs> deal with this. Now, look, as you and I discussed before this before before we started the show, they have multiple. Uh, multiple uh, promoters that are engaging, have a lot of pop-up events, really going to be kind of complicated how we deal with this, but we need to deal with it. When we come back on the other side, we'll get Billy Hughes' ideas about this as well. We'll see you after this. Welcome back to Coast View. We're meeting with my good friend, Billy Hughes, the mayor of Guffhorn. When we went to break, we talked a little bit about, uh, I mentioned uh, spring break conversation I had had with Fofo Gillis recently. And it's interesting, if you look back, at conversations with Paige Roberts and Tiffany Murdoch, with uh, Rob Siegler, who wrote a terrific and important column for Super Talk Mississippi News about gun violence and the rise of gun violence, especially a young young people, and then of course the conversation with Fofo. There's a you know the reality is this it's not surprising that we're dealing within the context of something like a spring series of spring vet break events, some formal, some not formal. This notion of, of gun violence, and one of the one of the points that Fofo made on the show was that drugs and alcohol and, and guns typically don't don't mix. What they experienced in Biloxi was was unprecedented. And um, Billy Hughes, you know, one of the things he mentioned is that he, he did talk to you and Leonard along the way afterwards to do sort of a debriefing. And then, of course, in the midst of it all, the the one coast, as he pointed out, response to uh, the shootings was, again, probably unprecedented as well. But what are your thoughts on what but Biloxi experienced? What, what, to, to what extent did Gupport experience issues related to this recent spring break activity? And what are your thoughts in general? Um, you know, it, it's a very serious discussion. And, you know, what you started out with, we, we've got a situation where there are um, a lot of youth out there, and this just wasn't limited to youth. But, you know, when you have spring breakers, they're usually mostly youth. But you got a situation where, you know, it used to be a status symbol for everybody to have one of these. Uh, and now kids, well, you know, they, um, they, a lot of them, it's, it's having a gun. So you mix, uh, you know, drugs, alcohol, um, uh, a little bit of sun and uh, some attitude and just some showing off and stuff. And uh, somebody... Uh, disrespects the wrong person and uh, people used to talk and, and fist fight things out and now they just go straight to shooting each other and that's not always the case every time but we've got a, a situation where there is a there is a um, gun carrying culture uh, and it's not limited to spring break but anytime you have that combination uh, you're probably going to have some poor judgment exercise and sometimes the outcomes are bad our spring breaks through the years um uh, most of them go, you know, without a lot of fanfare. Um, but we have had some where people have gotten shot, where people have died. And so um, fortunately, uh, the the incident in Biloxi uh, wasn't worse than it was, but the fact that it happened at all is problematic. And our public and we as public officials are tired of being overrun 
um, by folks who either purport to be pr promoters or they come into our communities with uh, plans uh, to have big parties that can impact public safety, that can impact our residents you know, without fi either filing out paperwork, letting us know what's going on, because it's important for us to be informed from a permitting standpoint or from an activity standpoint to know if we do need to prepare for large crowds in certain areas. Uh, and with this particular spring break, it's um, there's not any one promoter. There have been come and go through the years. Um, some of them came with their own histories and problems and have been run out of other communities. It's not always the case. But uh, I know in Gulfport, we take a hard look at our permitting process that if you're going to have a, a function, we need to know, you know, what the size of it is, what the density of crowd you're going to have, where is it going to be? And uh, those are things uniformly we need to make sure we have in place across the coast. Um, but no, no matter no matter what it is, but but I'll tell you, our history with events also determines how how we plan for them and prepare for them. And so we're fortunate that a lot of folks want to come down here. And uh, but we expect folks to conduct themselves in, in a manner um, that is going to be beneficial to the event, uh, the event goers and the residents as well. So that's a heck of a balance, but that's one we try to shoot for. What what are the interesting things? You look at some of the statistics from this last event in Biloxi, particularly in Mayor Chief, excuse me, uh, um, Police Chief Miller was, uh, uh, you know, kind of broke it all down. But you had a situation where 41 complaints that were linked to guns. Uh, this is not, a, by the way, these are not all all of the issues they face, but these, these are the ones that, that I wanted to really zero in on. Seven, uh, seven aggravated assaults involving police officers. And he said it could have been as many as 12 or more when you add in uh, bottles thrown at police officers or, or, or someone in a car that bumped a police officer. Uh, of course, you had the police officer that was shot in the arm and, and he's uh, reportedly doing uh, better, but may have nerve damage in his arm. Five other people shot in that s same situation. Of course, we had the homicide that we all know about. But the, but the reality is it was just a, a, a tough situation. And uh, it was good to hear that almost immediately the police chief from Miami called the police chief from Biloxi to share what, what they had gone through in Miami just this year, along with what they, what they planned to do about it. So one of the things they pointed out was that you had a lot of coordination among the police chiefs in, in, in Florida. And, and one of the things that they said is literally during their meeting, they actually said it out loud, we feel sorry for Biloxi. What they really were saying is we feel sorry for the Mississippi Gulf Coast because we, they're going to put all these things in place that's going to discourage people from going there and they're going to come here. And they said their only regret was that they didn't call us ahead of time and let us know that, that they had that observation. Um, so, so you're going to have to, you know, the, the, we're going to have to put some things in place now that hopefully will discourage Law, you know the lawless uh, behavior that we, that we all saw, um, and you know, hopefully we can coordinate that among the cities. But sometimes you just have to take the the most recent information, the most recent statistics, and then put whatever you can in place to uh, try to discourage it. And that that will this will be just another one of those cases, right? Well, you know, we've got a, we've got a coast that there's a lot of beach to enjoy, a lot of things to, to enjoy. And, and um, again, there is uh, on the national narrative, Ricky, there is a, a, a lack of respect that some folks, particularly on social media, tries to just tries to portray uh, towards the police, towards law enforcement. And in this community, we have a, an abiding respect for our men and women in blue um, who really respond in times of need. They keep the peace. And if they're disrespected, we're not going to put up with it. Um, we're, we're going to respond appropriately. And with events that have a history of folks um, uh, using guns, acting out, causing problems, blocking traffic, et cetera, uh, we're going to coordinate. Uh, we're going to make sure that those who come to have a good time have a good time. But folks who want to disrupt, um, uh, we're going to be pretty aggressive about making sure that lives aren't lost, people aren't injured. Uh, and the folks behave, but you know, fights in the street, you, you saw a lot of the video, um, you know, uh, stopping traffic, getting out of cars, twerking all over the place. It's just, you know, come on, there's a time and place folks, but uh, right in the middle of Highway 90, um, uh, where, where it puts people at risk when traffic's moving through, just need to use better judgment. And when, when it's not done, you're going to have arrests uh, and we're going to make sure that folks can still enjoy what they do uh, here uh, on a regular basis and can get from point A to point B safely. 
It, there was a point, it was shortly after the cop um, was shot in the arm, where the response was truly remarkable. Because I live, you know, I can see Pops Ferry Road Bridge, so I can see cars going south and north on Pops Ferry Road Bridge. Uh, traffic was literally stopped all across coast of Mississippi. I, I'm, I'm sure that in places in Gulfport, that, that fits the bill as well. People trying to get in or trying to get out. We, we can't have that. We can't have a moment where literally coast of Mississippi freezes for a minute because of, of a shooting like we experienced on Highway 90 in, in Biloxi. And hopefully, hopefully we can get the message out that things are put in place now. We want people to come here. We want them to have a good time. But boy, if they do any of these things, um, we're going to be we're going to be really focused on making sure they stop that as as soon as possible. And I, I, one of the things that I enjoy hearing from from uh, the mayor of Biloxi, Fofo Gillich, of course, is that he had already talked with you about what they experienced, and and Leonard Papania was involved in the conversation. Um, that's when, you know, that's when one coast really matters, isn't it? Well, you know, it really, it really does. That, that nobody's got a monopoly on good ideas. And the more we share, the better off we, we are and we understand, Ricky. The, um, you, you know, so what about other events? Um, you know, you got scraping the coast coming, you got Jeep in the coast coming, you got cruising the coast coming. There's so many great things to do. And a lot of them are vehicle oriented or, or celebration oriented. Uh, and, and then you have the, the nexus of things, you know, that happen at the Coliseum. So there's a lot up and down 90 in particular that this beachfront offers and allows and going back to Jones Park. So, you know, we, we just, um, you know, folks, we're, we're going to marshal up based on the experience. Number one, the crowd size, but also if there's, a, if there's um, an event like Black Spring Break that has its own set of circumstances and issues that it has historically, we're going to try to prepare for that from a law enforcement and an accommodation standpoint. Um, some folks, we were talking earlier, you know, on social media want to make everything racial. Uh, most things are not racial. It's about behavior, how you conduct yourselves, showing respect for each other and for law enforcement and our community. Man, you can get those things done. You know, it, it's, it's a good day for everybody. And, uh, and everybody goes away with some great memories and great experiences. And that's what we're all about. Yeah, I, def I definitely agree with that. There's no doubt about it. Hey, listen, we're visiting with the mayor of the city of Gulfport, Billy Hughes. When we come back on the other side for the final segment, we'll find out what, what else is on Billy's mind. We'll see you after this. Welcome back to Coastview. I have my friend, the mayor of the city of Gulfport, Billy Hughes, and uh, appreciate your your uh, conversation related to spring break. And now we'll just shift gears and, and move on. But, you know, Mayor, it's really, you know, first of all, we've had a string of beautiful weather here in coastal Mississippi, and you like to say we live in paradise, but we do live in paradise. And we have weather like we're experiencing right now. It uh, it's a great reminder why we live here. I know I know there's some hot months coming. And hopefully hurricane season's not going to be anything other than uh, come and go without any impact whatsoever. But this is a beautiful time of year to be in Mississippi, in coastal Mississippi, isn't it? Look, um, you know, people are finding opportunity all the time. And a lot of it has to do with this great climate that we enjoy. Uh, and we don't get out in it enough. Sometimes life gets in the way, but uh, when we're able to enjoy it, it's, it's a wonderful thing. It, re it really is. Hey, look, I, I, was, I, I follow your team pretty closely. Uh, Leonard seems to be doing a, a, an incredible job. Your police chief is, you know, d doing what you would expect him to do. Your fire chief's doing a great job. You got a great team around you right now, don't you? Uh, I said, if I've done anything right, it's assembled a really remarkable group of leaders who understand, uh, you know, what our mission is uh, in Gulfport, and and really uh, they embrace this whole one coast uh, collaborative kind of thing, and we've seen it internally as well as externally. When I came into office, everybody was organized in silos and said, guys, we've got to, you know, cross pollinate, and reach out and don't wait till we're asked to do something. So these these uh, men and women take some really good initiative, um, and, and look. Again, back to social media. If you could, if you listen to everything that was said about any of our cities, we'd all be going to hell in a handbasket. But the fact of the matter is, you know, against a lot of odds, we're pretty successful. Um, but we're always a work in progress, and that's the other thing I want to, you know, remind my colleagues, my council members that, you know, if, if there's something not working right, bring it to our attention. Uh, don't expect us to know what you don't tell us. And people tell us pretty regularly, whether it's garbage collection or, you know, permitting or our uh, beautification, any number of things. And, um, you know, right now, beautification is important to me. Uh, we're, we're getting a handle on the garbage collection, the debris collection, uh, taking a different direction. And I think that approach is working. But we have to have a larger discussion. I, you know, we had Earth Day this past weekend. 
And uh, they had to bring it uh, for hazardous materials to uh, Plant Jack Watson, Mississippi Power, a remarkable group of volunteers. But we've got a grassroots group here in uh, Gulfport uh, called uh, One Clean Gulfport. And they really have taken it upon themselves to promote, uh, you know, clean living, not messing up where you live. But we still have people who will not think twice about throwing things out their car, trash in our streets, and it's just unforgivable, and uh, it's untenable. And we have, uh, you know, our traffic fines. If we catch people um, littering, they're going to get that thousand dollar fine. I've already talked to our courts, administrators, and judges, and said, uh, people come before you for littering. Uh, we're not going to be cutting any deals. Um, we are serious about getting this place clean. But we had a group of seventy volunteers. Um, Saturday morning, get together on Earth Day, and we went just picked a little cordon of uh, off of Pass Road um, in 49 in that general vicinity, and we picked up in in a few hours. Um, it, Leonard said it's 70 degrees. We had 70 people, and we got 70 big bags of trash. So um, there, there's a lot to do with the fact that people will take their Saturday and 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 get engaged in the community cleanup is remarkable, and we need more of that. You know, one of the things I noted over the weekend is, you know, going down Highway 90 is that I, you, as a general rule, you don't see a lot of trash on Highway 90, just as a general rule. The beach, I think that that Chuck Loftus and his his team do a great job of get, keeping the beach clean, especially after big events. They do a remarkable job. They really but do. It's, uh, I, I actually, I posted, speaking of Chuck, I actually posted something about it that uh, I, I took my bike down to where where the the uh, shooting took place and was wa- you know was looking at all the litter that was having to be picked up, et cetera. And I was there about I don't know seven eight in the morning on my bike. Already the beach was clean. Already the whole beach was completely clean and and uh, the str- straining equipment, whatever they whatever you call that. It was it was incredible, really. That the that the view to the south was just literally impeccable. That's a that's a tough job they have, but they do a great job at it, don't they? So so yeah, and that's a great point. Uh, what a lot of folks, you know, a lot a lot of things we take advantage of, and if the government is doing its job, it's not noticed for the most part, and so that's kind of where it is. So Chuck and them doing that is really remarkable. Um, it's on the other hand, it's pretty disgusting how much trash they have to pick up and how much of our county and city budgets that we have to allocate towards cleanliness, to cleaning up after folks who should be taking their own responsibility and not throwing stuff out and picking up where they see some litter. But we expend a lot of public money on picking up public trash, and it's a shame. Yeah, it is. I mean, in fact, when you come back to the issues you were facing in the city about trash, you're having to change a lot of behaviors around that. I know that's not easy, but you said it's going fairly well. Um, so, um, you know, it, it, sometimes cultural change takes a little bit of time, and it can be painful, can it? It can. It can uh, but, but we got, quite frankly, um, spoiled for, is, is a good word for it, in, uh, that we would pick up anything and everything that, number one, we shouldn't be, number two, we're not responsible for, and number three, uh, if we continued, it's unsustainable from a budgetary and manpower standpoint. And so there's some things that, you know, when we did uh, did the statistics and saw that a very small percentage of people, 20%, 19%, are putting about about 100% of the debris and stuff out there, we got to change the way we do business and get back to the original ordinance. Um, but when I have people in the grocery store say, hey, really, really appreciate that. We're already seeing a difference. Thank you for making the effort. Part of it is just educating folks. A lot of folks, I didn't know I could take things to the dump at no cost or at minimal cost. And so it's, it's a re-education, but it is a change in our culture on how we take things into our own hands from a responsible standpoint. Well, Billy, thank you for visiting with me this morning. It's been great to catch up and uh, keep up the good work there in Gulfport. All right. Thank you, Ricky. Appreciate you promoting it. It's yeah, uh, you for sure. Good this, stuff to talk about. This has been the mayor of the city of Gulfport, Billy Hughes. Have a great day and we'll see you tomorrow.